a discussion of searches and seizures will be incomplete without a corresponding discussion on warrantless searches. Now, can a search be made even without a search warrant? The answer is yes. In the case of Manibog versus People, the general rule is that a search and seizure must be carried out through a judicial warrant. Otherwise, such search and seizure violates the Constitution. Any evidence resulting from it shall be inadmissible for any purpose in any proceeding. However, the constitutional prescription only covers unreasonable searches and seizures. Jurisprudence has recognized instances of reasonable warrantless searches and seizures which are number 1 a warrantless search incidental to a lawful arrest this applies to both arrests by virtue of a warrant of arrest and warrantless arrests under rule 113 section 5 of the revised rules on criminal procedure second we have the so called consented warrantless searches now, the consent here may be expressed or implied, and whether it is expressed or implied, such consent must be free of or free from duress or coercion, such that in the case of People versus Kogaed, the Supreme Court had occasion to emphasize that mere silence or lack of resistance can hardly be considered as consent to the warrantless search. And although the right against unreasonable searches and seizures may be surrendered through a valid waiver, consent to a warrantless search must be unequivocal, specific, intelligently given, and unattended by duress or coercion. The validity of a consented warrantless search is determined by the totality of the circumstances. This may involve an inquiry into the environment in which the consent was given, such as the presence of coercive police procedures. Mere passive conformity or silence to the warrantless search is only an implied acquiescence which amounts to no consent at all. Number three, we have the so-called seizure of evidence in plain view. The elements of which are Letter A, there must be a prior valid intrusion in which the police are legally present in the pursuit of their official duties. Letter B, the evidence was inadvertently discovered by the police who had the right to be where they are. Letter C, the evidence must be immediately apparent. And letter D, plain view justified mere seizure of evidence without further search. Let us say, for example, X, a police officer, was conducting a roving patrol around the city. While in the performance of his duty, he saw Y carrying a firearm that was tucked on his waist. Here, X can seize the firearm even without a search warrant because the evidence or the firearm was immediately apparent even without a further search. In other words, plain view justified the mere seizure of the firearm. He did not have to make a physical search because on sight, he readily saw why carrying a firearm. That is what is meant by seizure of evidence in plain view. And in that example, X had the right to be where he was because Conducting a roving patrol is one of a of is one of the duties of a policeman. And number four, we have the so-called search of a moving vehicle. Police officers cannot be expected to appear before a judge and apply for a search warrant when time is of the essence, considering the efficiency of vehicles in facilitating transactions involving contraband or dangerous articles. However, the inherent mobility of vehicles cannot justify all kinds of searches. Law enforcers must still act on the basis of probable cause. The case of Viridiano versus People 
merely emphasizes that a moving vehicle per se does not justify a warrantless search. Police officers must still act on probable cause, meaning they must have a reasonable ground to believe that contraband or dangerous articles are being carried inside the said moving vehicle. Because if there will be indiscriminate search of a moving vehicle, then practically all vehicles can be subjected to a search by suspecting policemen, regardless of the presence of probable cause. So, the police officers, before they are allowed to search a moving vehicle, they must be armed with probable cause or a well-founded belief that personal property subject of the offense or contraband or other dangerous articles are stored or kept or carried inside the said moving vehicle. Number five, customs search or customs searches. Persons duly commissioned to enforce tariff and customs laws may at any time, number one, enter pass through or search any land or enclosure of any warehouse, store, or other building not being a dwelling house to search for goods suspected to have been introduced in the country in violation of the customs laws. Number two, they have also the duty or the right to go aboard any vessel or aircraft and to inspect, search, and examine said vessel or aircraft and any trunk package, box, or envelope on board, and search any person on board the said vessel or aircraft. Or number three, open and examine any box, trunk, envelope, or other container wherever found when there is reasonable cause to suspect the presence therein of dutiable or prohibited articles introduced into the Philippines contrary to law, and likewise to stop search and examine any vehicle, beast of burden, or person reasonably suspected of holding or conveying such article as aforesaid. This is so provided in the Tariff and Customs Code. Number six, stop and frisk searches or the so-called Terry searches. What is a stop and frisk search? It is the act of a police officer to stop a citizen or any person on the street, interrogate him, and pat him for weapon or weapons or contraband. It is limited to a protective search of outer clothing for weapons. Although a stop and frisk search is a necessary law enforcement measure specifically directed towards crime prevention, there is a need to safeguard the right of individuals against unreasonable searches and seizures. Law enforcers do not have unbridled discretion in conducting stop and frisk searches. While probable cause is not required, a stop and frisk search cannot be validated on the basis of a mere suspicion or hunch. Law enforcers must have a genuine reason to believe based on their experience and the particular circumstances of each case, that criminal activity may be afoot. Reliance on one suspicious activity alone, or none at all, cannot produce a reasonable search. An example of a stop and frisk search is what happened in the case of Posadas versus Court of Appeals. Here, the accused's suspicious actions, coupled with his attempt to flee when the police officers introduced themselves, amounted to a reasonable suspicion that he was concealing something Ill illegal in his bag. So, the Supreme Court upheld you know, the arrest of the accused in that case as a valid stop and frisk search. Another example of a stop and frisk search is what happened in the case of 
people versus Solayo. Here, police officers were investigating reports that a group of armed men was roaming the barangay that night. As they patrolled the streets, they saw seemingly drunk men, among them the accused, wearing a camouflage uniform. The men fled upon seeing the police, but Solayo was caught and found with an unlicensed firearm. So in that case, the Supreme Court upheld the validity of the warrantless search as a stop and frisk search since the unfolding events did not leave the police officers enough time to procure a search warrant. Last but not the least, we have the so-called checkpoints. Checkpoints are allowed in exceptional circumstances to protect the lives of individuals and ensure their safety. They are also sanctioned in cases where the government's survival is in danger. Considering that routine checkpoints intrude on a motorist's right to free passage to a certain extent, they must be conducted in a way least intrusive to motorists. The extent of routine inspections must be limited to a visual search. Routine inspections do not give law enforcers a blanket authority to perform warrantless searches. For as long as the vehicle is neither searched nor its occupant subjected to a body search and the inspection of the vehicle is limited to a visual search, said routine checks cannot be regarded as violative of an individual's right against unreasonable searches. Thus, a search where an officer merely draws aside the curtain of a vacant vehicle which is parked on the public fairgrounds or simply looks into a vehicle or flashes a light therein is not considered unreasonable. This was decided in the case of Valmonte versus De Villa. DOJ Advisory Opinion on Checkpoints a checkpoint is a place where the military or police check vehicular or pedestrian traffic in order to enforce circulation control measures and other laws, orders, and regulations which involves only a brief detention of travelers during which the vehicle's occupants are required to answer a brief question or two. The general public is hereby advised on the rules on military or police checkpoints as follows. Number one, a checkpoint must be well lighted, properly identified, and manned by uniformed personnel. Checkpoint guidelines provide that all personnel manning legitimate checkpoints should be in service uniform with the name plates and other identification tags clearly visible and readable. Number two, upon approach, slow down, dim your headlights, and turn on cabin lights, but never step out of the vehicle. In a checkpoint inquiry, the occupants cannot be compelled to step out of the vehicle. This has been decided by the Supreme Court in Abenes v. CA. Number three, lock all doors. Only a visual search is allowed. In the case of Caballas versus CA, the Supreme Court said that the search which is normally permissible is limited to a visual search where the officer simply looks into the vehicle and flashes a light therein without opening the car's door. Number four, do not submit to a physical or body search. The search which is normally permissible is limited to an instance where the occupants are not subjected to a physical or body search. Number five, you are not obliged to open the glove compartment, the trunk, or bags. The personnel manning the checkpoint cannot compel the motorist to open the trunk or glove compartment of the car or any package contained therein. Such extensive search requires the existence of probable cause, as ruled in the case of People v. Lacerna. Number six, ordinary or routine questions may be asked, yes. Be courteous but firm with your answers. 
checkpoint involves only a brief detention of travelers during which the vehicle's occupants are required to answer a brief question or two. Number seven, assert your rights, have presence of mind, and don't panic. The constitutional immunity against unreasonable searches and seizures is a personal right which may be waived. Affirmative acts of volition without being forced or intimidated to do so shall properly be construed as a clear waiver of right. Number eight, keep your driver's license and car registration handy and within reach. To avoid delay and inconvenience, ready the car registration documents for inspection in, in case required by authorities. Number nine, be ready to use your cell phone at any time. Speed dial the emergency number. And number 10, report violations immediately.